Hello, I wanted to talk to you this morning for just a minute about production possibility curve. Even though this is very early in the course, this is an important foundational concept that we will use throughout, throughout the course, so let's make sure we understand it. We start with a graph to demonstrate the concept. Whenever you use a graph, it's very important to know what the axes are. When we do supply and demand curves, you will have price and quantity. A graph uh, very much changes its meaning based on what's the axes. In this graph, we will show two products. Let's start with the example of a farmer. Let's say a farmer has a land and he can grow corn or wheat. Now the way this graph works, if he grows zero wheat and all corn, you go up this. If he grows zero corn and all wheat, you go down this axis. And of course he'll grow some combination of the two. If he grows all corn, he can grow this much. If he grows all wheat, he can grow this much. And then he can trade off his land in between and grow half corn, half wheat, etc. This is what we call the production possibility curve, or the, the production frontier. If he uses all his land, that's how much he can grow. Um, if he uses less than all his land, maybe he uses, leaves some of his land un, or fa fallow and unplowed, then he's in here. He could plant more and go out there and use more land. Okay. Now let's move from the farmer to a different concept. Let's talk about the whole economy and use some representative products. We'll call these guns and butter. That's a common um, representation we use in economics. A trade-off between military goods and consumer goods. Let's say if the entire economy uses all its resources, all its labor, all its machinery to make guns, it can make this many guns. And that means it makes no butter. If instead it uses all of its um, resources to make butter, it's down here. And of course it has a trade-off. It can make some of one and some of another. You notice I drew the line curve this time instead of straight. That's because in reality, the line is curved because some resources are better for making one good versus another. So when you see the curve in the book, it will be curved. If you have full employment, everyone's employed, everyone's working, you'll be on the curve somewhere. Which is a better point on the curve? We don't judge that. All of these are efficient points because all of your resources are being made. What if you have unemployment, inefficiency, or don't make all your, use all your resources? Then you'd be somewhere in here like point A. What about point B? How do you get out there? You don't. That's the definition. Production possibilities end there. That's all you can make. Impossible, inefficient. And let me give you an example here. During the Great Depression in the 1930s, we were here. We had unemployment. When the World War II started, we fully utilized all our resources. We went more to guns, so we went up there. Until everyone was employed and we used all of our resources. Now let's give you another example. When the Cold War with the Soviet Union ended, they had what they called a peace dividend. We moved like this. We moved from A to B. We made less guns and more butter. And that's what they call a peace dividend. Now, one other concept to conclude with. Look at what you give up. Remember we talked about opportunity cost? Opportunity cost is what you give up to get something. In this case, to get that much more B, you give up that much more, well, I mean, if you get this much more butter, you give up that much guns. So opportunity cost is what you give up to get something. And the production possibility curve actually shows you a way to measure
the opportunity cost of making a move or a change. Well, read about this concept in the book and let me know if you have any questions.